Hi, my name is Jesse Warren and I'm a sophomore attending Amyville High School located in downtown Elk Creek, New Mexico. Hi, I'm Catherine Rivera, also a sophomore attending Amyville High School. We are located in the historic federal building which was built in 1908. Our high school is the only high school that has been located downtown in Elk Creek, New Mexico in over 40 years. Amyville was founded in 2000 and the first graduating class was in 2004. We have approximately over 200 students attending Amyville High. And we would like to show you the inside of our school. I think Amyville High School is a really unique school. It helps you accomplish your goals out of high school. I like learning because of this school. I wanted to go to college and I can't wait to start tomorrow and I can't wait to start classes because I like learning now because of them. Who thinks they've maximized the profit when there's one constraint? Amy Beale High School was named after a graduate of Santa Fe High School who died tragically while working to end apartheid in South Africa. The school has adopted her belief in the humanity of people and the importance of higher education. In essence, a school has a higher expectation for morality and ethics, and having a school named after a person who really lived that, I think is a powerful message to kids. Um, it's called the Magical Experience, and it's... Amy Beale High School is a public charter school dedicated to scholarship and service to the community. You're acting as a mentor's role model in, in an elementary school. The school operates year-round and uses its three breaks for increased professional development and student support. Amy Beale High is the first school in the nation to require each student to complete two college courses before graduation. With the support for success in higher education built into the four-year curriculum, Every student graduates with the skills and confidence necessary for a productive and fulfilling career after high school. We have high standards around habits and really are trying to model for our students what does it mean to be a scholar. It means being disciplined, it means being organized, it means being prepared. And what I so admire in our staff is that everyone is really together in that commitment to saying, okay, we're going to keep and in creative and different ways honing in on these habits that, regardless of what they study, will serve them by the time they're seniors. So you read about examples in Iran during this time period that if people stepped out of their social class or political or historical boundaries, they were punished in some way? They took out the, um, the Shah and everything. and they This is a history class, and in ninth grade you take New Mexico history, and in tenth grade you take U.S. history. In 11th grade, you take a class called Humanities, and in 12th grade, you take a class called Passage, which supports you with your senior project. I mean, it's not it's in the almost, child's best like interest, the, of course, but in the families. But it's no longer, like, enforced by law, so you have social mobility within a culture. At every grade level, community service is integrated into the curriculum. Senior year, this culminates in a year-long, self-designed project that provides practical application for academic studies and demonstrates the value and rewards of civic participation. It's really important for us to make sure that they understand that the education part isn't for nothing, that it's for something. And the something for them during this year is their service. But like we're fighting more for like the right to choose. So. We have a student this year who is working at NARAL, and it's an association that fights for reproductive rights. And so this particular student is taking a course at UNM called Feminism and Sexuality. And so it's a great fit with what she's doing uh, in her senior project. Fort Lewis College. We as a school believe that having high expectations for all students honors the potential that each student has, so that if the bar is low, that's where they'll stay. If the bar is high, and again, what's critical is that we support them to reach it, then they will indeed rise to that occasion. At Amyville High School, we have two full-time social workers, Kathleen Moore and Jonathan Wilkes. We come to them to talk to them about dilemmas that we have with another student if we're struggling with grades or if we're having personal problems or if we just need somebody to talk to, so let's go meet them. Hey Jesse, hey Catherine. Hi, Hi. How's it going? Good. What do you guys I think doing? the small setting allows relationships to be built and continued and carried. We get to know 
the ins and outs of the student, of their family, their friends, their jobs, their hobbies, um, so the relationships can really develop that way. If educators really want to reach their students, I think what a lot of it has to do with is a personal relationship. We, we both went to a public school our first year, and we both hated it. We were thrown into the system. We were, no one cared. No one pushed us to do our best. Here, they pushed us to work, and they just care about their students. Two years later, I, you know, I'm not even part of the school anymore, and I still come back. We're going to walk up to an advisory right now, and we have advisory three times a week, 30 minutes a day, with 13 to 15 students, roughly, in each class, and we have it all four years with the same students in the same advisory. This is a good thing if you meet early in the week and not at the end of the week. As an advisor, I'll check in with my students and their teachers on how classes are going, how grades are going, communicate with parents about um, what's going on in the classroom. And then also the social-emotional support component of that, how to manage stress, how to build coping skills, how to have positive, healthy relationships. This is in Daba Hall, and in Zulu, in Daba means gathering of the elders. And at Amyville High School, we use it as a gathering also. We use it for lunch, talent shows, literature circles, assemblies, and a place for classes to just spread out. Go, go. And so what we want to do is we want to go through a new process of creating a new dress code policy. And what we've done is we've asked some experts from the community to come in and participate with two of our seniors in a panel about appropriate dress. Amy Beal believes in putting democratic principles into action through students playing an active role in creating policies and practices in their school. If it's disrupting somebody's education, how about this? If somebody complains about someone's dress, then they have to go change. Because then anybody who wants to learn can learn if something's distracting. Um, the only real problem with that idea is everybody's opinions are different. And if they don't like the way you look, then um, forcing you to like go change that really isn't a democracy at all. It's just kind of a dictatorship. And someone, I mean, like anybody could tell you they don't like the way you look and they could make you change. So that would take away your freedom to look the way you want to. Our hope is that you will take what you're learning and you're going to make a change somewhere in the world, whether it's just in some small way within your own family, whether it's at a, at a bigger level, um, you know, locally, or whether it's clear across the world that somehow you're going to understand that there's a lot that you have to do and you have to know to be able to do that.